Hey, Cheryl Lazar here. I'm backstage at the Chirp Twitter conference. I'm with Patrick Meyer, who runs an amazing, innovative platform called Ushahidi. They crowdsource crisis information. This is something that many of you might not have seen as of yet, but I am very sure you will see more of this in the future. Patrick, so Ushahidi first really came to be during the crisis in Haiti? Well, actually, we got a lot of visibility in Haiti, but we were actually born out of the post-election violence in Kenya about two years ago, when a lot of human rights violations were going undocumented. The government was pressing some, putting some pressure on the mainstream media about what to report and what not to report, and, and, and also the mainstream media cannot be everywhere at the same time. NGOs were not sharing information, and we decided that was really not okay. So we threw up a, a Google map of Kenya. We got a short code, uh, 6007, with Safaricom, which made, meant that anybody in, in uh, Kenya could text in their observations saying, I just saw a riot, I just saw the person getting you know, beaten up or what have you. And then we would be able to geolocate that and have a completely transparent map that anybody could access and see what was happening. And since then, we've really, it's, it's been exported across the world. It's been used to monitor the elections in Afghanistan, citizen-based sort of powered, citizen-powered election monitoring in Afghanistan, in Lebanon, in Mexico, in the Sudan right now, which is literally right now. Um, but let's go back to Haiti in terms of, because yeah, that's where a lot of people really came to know you a bit more sure. and what you guys are doing. Um, describe the process of when a crisis happens, how you step in and help crowdsource this information. Sure, well, what we did in Haiti was I found out about the earthquake a couple hours after it took place on, on, saw it on CNN and I immediately called the Ushahidi tech team and said, right, we've got to deploy a platform. So anybody can go on our site, ushahidi.com, and download, it's a free and open source platform, and download the platform and then customize it for whatever purposes they're interested in doing. Um, we quickly deployed one. We customized it for disaster response, specifically for earthquake um, disasters. And so the categories and indicators that we had were there to inform the disaster response to search and rescue operations. And then we, with some uh, close collaboration with other colleagues, including State Department, were able to get a sh another short code for Haiti this time. The number was 4636, which meant that anybody in Haiti could text in their urgent life and death situation with their location so that we could actually try and get help to them. So we would map that information. And the way this worked was we actually had several hundred volunteers. Uh, you can imagine student volunteers just dropping everything they were doing and spending hours and hours and hours behind their laptop just mapping, getting these text messages that are coming in from the ground and mapping those as quickly as possible. So you got a visual sense of really what was going on. Oh yeah, absolutely. And if you go to haiti.ushahidi.com, you'll see we've mapped over 3,500 individual incidents, crisis-related incidents, and you can actually animate that map from that first hour on January 12th and look at how the distribution gets reported over time. And now with, the Su with Sudan and the voting, how will a platform like yours be useful? Well, the idea is, um, so the Sudan project, uh, some Sudanese organizations approached us uh, almost a year ago and said they were interested in using the platform. They saw what would happen in Lebanon. And uh, we don't generally take the lead in deployments. And so they went ahead and you know, uh, customized the platform, put it in Arabic, and then uh, with other partners, we're able to get short codes. Now, Sudan is an interesting example because we don't really have a precedent in having Ushidi used in a non-permissive, i.e. repressive, authoritarian uh, government. And the idea is to try and create more transparency and accountability uh, for the kind of irregularities that might be taking place. And uh, I mentioned to you earlier, we found out this morning that the site has been blocked. We don't, we can't trace it yet. We don't quite know who or what the motivation is, but... Um, so can you show us the site so people get a sense quickly? Sure, should we use your laptop? So oh, yeah. Um, so you go... I don't know if some people can here, see. Here, if you go to sudanvotemonitor.com, there have been, I think, a, a couple hundred or so... Um, so people basically, they can check into certain regions and say if there's been defamation, right. um, there's voting access, disturbances, exactly. which there seems to be in red, many, right. vote tampering. So you really, um, and those are things that citizens can put up there themselves. That's true, they can do that. So yeah, there are hundreds of monitors with field monitors with civil society organizations, but your average citizen can also 
either go online if they have access to the internet and just go to the web form and say submit incident and say what they just saw, or they can use text messaging, which is obviously preferable um, in the Sudan. Well, this obviously has the possibility to change many things. Uh, where do you see this lying in terms of the future and uh, countries using it? You know, what ultimately this tool is, it, it is a, a transparency and accountability tool. So it's obviously going to upset some people when it's used in some of these contexts. And it's also used for coordination, as we saw in Chile and Haiti. And I think the sky is the limit. We're working, you know, um, day in, day out to make the platform easier to use so that it's, we're trying to get to this sort of double-click install approach so that people can just create their own dynamic maps and crowdsource their own information. And you're working with the government, actually? Are you working with any, or is it just we completely, are. it's... It's, uh, so we're a Kenyan uh, non-profit tech company. Okay. Um, our headquarters, if you can call it that, is, is based in Nairobi, where we just launched an innovation hub, but we're literally spread across Africa. Joburg, Malawi, Ghana, Uganda, and uh, a couple of us are here in the U.S. as well. All right. Well, I look forward to see how, how this is applied everywhere else in the world. Thank you. Thank you. Go to ushahidi.com.